Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I'm taking a break from cleaning up my basement to make a quick video because I'm kind of uh, losing steam with that. And this video is about the Fujifilm SP2, uh, Instax Share SP2, I guess is the full name. It's kind of wordy, but whatever. This isn't usually something I'd cover in a video, but I kind of like this. Um, it has that hipster feel to it because it prints sort of Polaroids, but they're actually Fujis, not Polaroids, because Polaroid's a brand name. Um, it has this tiny battery, by the way. I was shocked at how small this battery was. Plus, it didn't ship with any charge, so I had to wait like an hour and a half before I could use this thing for it to charge fully. But uh, you'd, expect, you'd expect on such a large item it would have a larger battery. But uh, whatever. So I'm not usually a hipster kind of guy, charge port, but I like the sort of retro thing about it anyway. I, I like physical pictures. I like having something to hold and look at and post on the wall. Digital photo frames I'm not huge on because they die after a while and uh, they're just not as nice as a printed, a high quality printed picture, which, and that's the old cartridge. Um, I've already used this a bit. And I guess these aren't that high quality. And they're kind of expensive. I mean, this film here is a two pack, which has uh, 10 sheets per pack. So it's 20 sheets total, 20, uh, 20 pictures total. And I think this was 12 bucks, which makes it a little over 50 cents a picture, which is kind of a lot. But then again, if you consider a lot of printers, like how much it would cost to print out photos with toner or ink and uh, whatever other BS, I mean, and nice photo paper, I guess it's not crazy. So anyway, that's how it goes in. I mean, it's very simple. And then once you put in the uh, cartridge of film, it spits out that. And I actually want to put a pair of googly eyes here. I should have done that before the video. So it looks like it's sticking out its tongue. But anyway, so that's all you need to do. You stick it in there. It spits out that uh, cover protector, whatever the hell that is. And uh, you can start printing from your phone. That's one thing I don't like about this is that it has a USB port, but it's just for charging. I would love if you could hook this up to your computer because I have most of my best shots that I want to print out and stick on my wall. I took with a real camera, not with my phone. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying when cool things are happening, I tend to bring a real camera, not just my phone. So I already installed this. It's the Instax Share app. It's not a great app. I'm not a huge fan of it. The selected picture cannot be used. What is it talking about? And then there's no picture there. Okay. I guess I didn't delete any pictures. Unfortunately, Instax Share has stopped. Well, that's great, because like I said, it's not a very good program. Uh, it's not well made at all, in fact. When it starts up, it asks for permissions. It asks for permissions to media and storage, uh, which is, makes perfect sense, because it needs access to your pictures. It asks for permissions to the camera, which makes sense, because you can take pictures from within the app and then just print them out. And it also asks for permission for GPS, for location services. Now, I don't want to give a permission to location services because I don't want Fuji and whatever the hell this does to know where I am. I mean, what does it need to know that for? Because I'm not going to use it to take pictures. I'm going to select from pictures I already took, right? That's just stupid. Anyway, if you don't give it the GPS permission, which I didn't, it will not connect to the printer. It says some, here it is, this, this error message. Like, how, how unhelpful is that? Come on, Fuji. Like, if I don't give you the GPS permission, don't rake me over the coals. The only way to fix it is to turn on the GPS permission, which I did, and now works fine. Uh, I'm going to select the picture. I don't think I have anything uh, that you guys can't see on here. Um, and all the ones with the green check boxes are uh, stuff I've already printed. Even though I already printed this picture of Amanda, and, uh, and after I printed it, it said could not connect to printer, but the printout had actually come out. So here, I'm going to connect and print this as long as we're here. So it says searching for a printer. Another thing I hate about this, no printer could be found. Great. Oh, because I didn't turn it on. And it's upside down. Wonderful. This is a great start to the video. So when you turn it on, um, there's 10 LEDs, white LEDs there, which indicate how many pictures you have left. So I have a full 10 because I just put this cartridge in. And a power light. And it's green when you have a full battery. I think it flashes green when you have half a battery. And then uh, red when you're completely screwed. And those uh, LEDs also, the 10 LEDs are used as kind of a progress bar. I don't know if you'll quite see it with the exposure settings I have here, but um, so anyway, it's going ah, there. Now it connected and I can hit print. And so one BS thing about this is that it uses Wi-Fi to connect to the printer. Like the printer acts as an access point and it uses Wi-Fi, but that means whenever you use this printer, it drops your Wi-Fi connection on your phone, which means if you have photos on like your Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever that's not on your phone that you want to download in order to print, 
well, then you got to do that over your 4G service or exit out of the app to give your Wi-Fi back to your phone so that you could get it, you know, without using your band. I mean, it's just like use Bluetooth. I mean, Bluetooth 4 has to have the bandwidth to print small, low resolution pictures like this. These take a while to develop, longer than Polaroids, I think. So, uh, you know, I'm not big on selfies usually, but uh, you have a retake option. Okay. And then it puts it... For, for pictures you take in the app, it uses the intelligence filter automatically, which like kind of makes the picture a little more vivid. I think adds a little saturation. Um, in the app, you can also edit the picture. You can sort of resize it, uh, enlarge, shrink. If it's the wrong aspect ratio, you can move it around a little bit, but you can't really squeeze it in every which way you want. Rotate. I think I'll leave the, uh, yeah. And uh, various filters. Not too much it's not crazy it's not like not like instagram there's sepia black and white intelligence filter and no filter and then you can do a custom filter which is just brightness contrast and saturation you know not robust as far as that goes but as you'll see when it prints i mean it's not that big a deal i kind of like the intelligence filter because to get the most out of this film because it has low dynamic range and uh, the colors aren't that great to get the most out of it you're better off using the extra saturation of the intelligence filter like, you got to assume Fuji knows what they're doing in order to improve the pictures for printout. So, uh, I don't think you can see it right now, but show it from a different angle. Yeah, you can kind of see the LEDs pulsating there. It's kind of cool. And I think the printer is actually supposed to go like this. Like, I mean, you can leave it flat if you want, but it seems to be created to be oriented as an upright thing, which is actually good because it takes up less space on your desk. Yeah, and it now, <laughs> good, good. This isn't cooperating, so I can actually show you everything that's wrong with it. It said the picture could not be printed. Oh, couldn't it? Because it's right here, and it's definitely starting to develop, and my face is there. So, yeah, I mean, Fuji, work on your app a little. Hey, you can see this picture's coming along. Apparently, I heard shaking a Polaroid doesn't actually do anything, but you can't help but do it. So like I said, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a hipster. I don't like watch movies on a VHS or uh, take pictures with a giant old timey film camera. I love digital cameras, but I do like this mechanism of taking digital pictures and turning them into physical objects you can touch and uh, post on a bulletin board like this. Just kind of fun. I don't know. It's not really like this is, wouldn't be used for business purposes. You know, like this isn't something you need. No one needs this, right? But it, it's fun. It's cool. Plus, it's a good way if you if you take digital pictures, you want to give them out to your uh, elderly relatives or people who aren't big on digital photos. You know, it's good for that because you can bring it with you to a wedding or something. If you take a really good picture, you can print out a few copies. Oh, I should say it has this reprint button. So whatever the last picture was, you press that, it'll reprint it. So you can have uh, so you can fire off a lot of copies of the same picture if you got something really good that you want to give out to a bunch of people. So like I said, overall I like it, but the film is expensive. The cheapest I could find it was in a hundred pack, and it was still like 53 cents a picture. Another kind of good thing about it being expensive is that it makes you pick and choose what pictures you want to print. Like which pictures are the most important to you and uh, most valuable. This is not one of them, but uh, I figured I'd sacrifice one of these for the sake of the video. But like this one of Amanda, that's a picture I like to keep. So anyway, I've been Scott, uh, back to the basement cleanup I guess. That's going to be fun.